Right, good afternoon guys. Uh, so this this is something that was asked on the Discord server uh, very, very recently and uh, I know Gav said he was looking to do something as well, certainly on the, the Phoenix aircraft. So I, I thought I'll give it a go as well just to maybe um, save Gav doing it and uh, certainly might help just having a little bit more input uh, obviously for me just in, in terms of what we're going to do. And, and the question in itself was uh, what do we need to do when we're diverting? Um, and sort of the thought processes around that. So I, I think Gavin has sort of answered that really. The, the reasons to divert an aircraft from your original uh, sort of planned destination could be a number of reasons. It can be sort of a technical issue, uh, you know, weather issue, um, you know, maybe a passenger issue. You know, that's that's usually the sort of three main problems that we can get. Um, weather generally being the, the most um you know, common problem, I suppose. So what I thought I'd do is just do a, a sort of quick video, really, or hopefully it'll be a relatively quick video. It shouldn't take too long, maybe half an hour. It's not going to be the entire flight, and uh, it doesn't really matter what we're doing, but it's, it's really just to sort of get you into the thought processes of, of uh, what we're doing in terms of a planning perspective, so what we do when we're on the ground, um, and looking at our, our destination, our, alter, our alternate, what we need to put in the FMGC, um, the thought process around the the fuel decisions and flight planning, uh, and then once you know what we're doing, once we're airborne as well, and then possibly what we do once we're uh, committed to go somewhere else. So I've got a little flight here planned. And again, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's just Gatwick to Madeira, and I've picked this today just because the weather's actually a little bit interesting in Madeira today. Um, so it might make it interesting from a planning point of view. So uh, if we look at the weather. Uh, those those of you that know Madeira reasonably well will we'll know there's some wind limits. So we can see here uh, the actual meter at the minute. It's looking pretty nice. So zero one zero degrees at 17 knots. Um, good fizz, uh, and that's all looking pretty good. And if we look at the landing charts, it doesn't really matter which one it is, but I've got an RMP AR chart here. We've got uh, wind limitations for Madeira. So uh, between zero one zero and three zero zero degrees, or three zero zero to zero one zero degrees, it's 15 gusting 25. That that's the maximum wind it can be. Uh, if we're doing this approach onto zero 05, which at the minute seems to be okay, maybe, maybe not, you know, zero 010 zero at 17, so it looks like it's maybe a couple of knots outside the limits, so there's there's potentially a good chance that we wouldn't actually be able to make this approach. Um, when we look at the actual uh, TAF, you know, the forecast, it's looking a lot worse. So when we look at this, uh, we've got uh, a tempo here between uh, 6 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock tomorrow, uh, 36020 gust in 32, and then a prop 40 tempo, so that, you know, prop 40s mean it's pretty likely to happen. Again, same time period, 36025 gust in 37. So if we look at that wind and we take that into account, um, 36025 is well outside the, the limitations for the approach. So just from a, a quick planning point of view, th there's a good chance we could operate this flight and, and have a look, um, but there's also a very, very good chance that we wouldn't actually be able to make an approach and land in Madeira. So that's the sort of main thing that we've looked at. So when we look at our actual flight plan, all the usual stuff here, we've got uh, you know, dry operating payload, payload uh, fuel, fuel load of passengers today as well. So um, this is making it almost a little bit more interesting um, in the sense that we've only got 905 kilograms of underload, so not much space to get any more sort of passengers and cargo on. Um, I think I did have uh, a ton of cargo on as well, potentially. Um, I can't quite remember if that was there or not. Um, uh, but uh, when it comes to the fuel planning, it says here, uh, extra tanker on the brackets uh, it says L1867 kilos and what the L means it means it's a landing weight restrictions because there's no landing weight restrictions in Madeira we can land up to the maximum landing weight of 66 tons and um, we can put on another 1800 kilograms and land at a maximum uh, landing weight so because it's unlikely we're going to get into Madeira um, it's probably quite a good idea to take a little bit extra fuel now what we've also done which has helped us is we've also got Tenerife South as our alternate. So there's another little airport near Madeira called Porto Santo which is a, a good little place to get into uh, but you can't always guarantee that. So included in our fuel planning here we've got an alternate which is a more likely place to go to um, which is Tenerife which is about another hour away and it takes two and a half tonnes to get there. So we've already got a pretty healthy fuel anyway uh, in terms of what we plan to do um, and when we come across to our CNR now our, our CNR is our company nominal reserves or normal reserves and basically what this figure represents is when we land in Madeira or when we make the approach into Madeira if we do a go around from effectively from the runway um, we need a minimum of 3.7 tons 
in the tanks in that go around to be able to make our way all the way to Tenerife and land with our final reserve. So it's thinking we're using 2.5 tonnes to get there, and if we use 2.5 tonnes from 3.7, we land with just about uh, just over a tonne, which is our final reserve. And this is the amount of fuel we have to land with. Um, this is like a legal requirement. If we're not going to be landing with this, if we, if we start into the, eating into the, the final reserve, that's then a fuel mayday, which is uh, a pretty serious uh, situation. So we want a minimum of 3.7 uh, in Madeira, on the approach into Madeira, to be able to make the go around and still land uh, above final reserve in Tenerife. So we know 12.7 is roughly the fuel to achieve that. Um, so then we want to just make sure that Tenerife is okay as well. And if we look at the weather in Tenerife, we can also see it's looking reasonably good at the minute. It's not too bad. It's cab okay, but there is a forecast of some gusts. 0, 7, 0 degrees, 23 gusting 33 knots. So potentially wind shear as well. Um, so Tenerife is, you know, maybe not the best option. I mean, you can certainly do it. Um, but if we look at our other options, we've got Fiat Ventura uh, and Gran Canera. And here's the other one, Porto Santo, next to Madeira. Probably wouldn't opt to do that because that's going to be windy, very similar to Madeira at the same sort of time. Um, but we can see here Fiat Ventura is actually fine. It's uh, Cavoque and the forecast is looking pretty good as well. So from a fuel planning point of view, um, I think actually Fiat Ventura might be a better uh, runway or better sort of uh, alternate to go to and uh, in our sort of uh, flight plan we do actually have a correction um, where it tells us how much more fuel we need or don't need to get to uh, other alternates so here we've got fuel to venture so it's actually less fuel um, so sometimes this is a positive so it might say plus 164 or something which means there's another 164 on your Tenerife fuel to get somewhere else but we can see here fuel to venture and Grand Canary is actually uh, less so this 2.7 or 2.5 sorry 2.6 to get to Tenerife is going to cover Tenerife, Grand Canaria and Fiorentura. Um, so you know if we take the minimum amount of fuel 12.7 we're going to take 12.7 we're going to burn about 8.4 and we should be landing um, or arriving with uh, in Madeira with about four tons this is fuel over destination so that's the 3.7 plus the contingency more or less so we should be arriving in Madeira for the first approach with about four tons um, because this is just basically the CNR plus the contingency now on a day like this you know we probably don't want to take plug fuel even though we've got a little bit of space in places um, but it's always a good chance just to give it another go um, you know certainly you want to make uh, two approaches um, into Madeira um, because of course our, our sort of company SOPs is you can make two approaches to your destination but then if you can't get in on your second approach if it's certainly weather related you have to dive uh, unless uh, you know uh, sort of safety critical um, things apply and it, it's maybe safer to make a third approach or if the weather doesn't you know maybe a go around was um, a blocked runway or, or somebody didn't get off the runway in time so you know then, then you could maybe justify a third approach but uh, you know certainly today weather's going to be a, a sort of a factor for us so there's a good chance that if we do two go around to Madeira it will be weather and then we'll have to look to go somewhere else so the fact that we can get 1800 kilograms of fuel extra on um, you know 12.7 is the minimum so I would probably put maybe at least half of that um, maybe a ton I would go a ton so I'd go 13.7 as our block fuel and then that means I've got enough fuel to give it another go in Madeira and then on the second approach if I still can't get in on the second approach I should still easily have 3.7 or possibly more than that maybe over four tons uh, then to look to go to Tenerife um, or Fiat Venture or wherever and then land at one of those uh, destination alternates and still land above my final reserve so it's a little bit of a complicated process to work through but once you've done it a few times and you understand the fuel planning and, and what sort of which each component uh, you know what each component means um, it's a little bit more understanding so let's um, load up 13.7 uh, again I'm not going to do a full setup here this is just really a sort of uh, an exercise to explain um, what we're doing so there we go 13.7 load that up let's just do that instant uh, and let's look at the actual FMGC so if we load up the FMGC and then we can look at the the fuel planning side of it as well on this uh, and generally, you know Phoenix is modeled it reasonably well it's not perfect um, but uh, we'll have a look anyway so we've already said that Tenerife is maybe not the the number one option so we're going to go maybe Fiat Ventura so GCFV uh, and then the flight number I think Monarch 272 I think we are 
Uh, cost index is. Let's have a quick look. Cost index is 12. Get the wins in. Uh, get the departure in, so I think it's 2 6 left. Novmo on X ray. Uh, then we're going to put the RMP uh, AR approach in. So make sure we just get the correct one. So it's an RNAV, it's RNAV Zulu, that's the RMP AR. And then the arrival is via Rakan. Rakan 1 Papa, I think that's what it said. Yep. Yeah. I approach uh, via Pilem. And then hopefully that should all be in the flight plan. Just run through this, make sure it's all connected. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about the setup. It's more exercise to explain what we're doing. So yeah, there's the RMP Alpha, uh, or RMP AR Zulu. Um, RMP AR Zulu approach to 05. Get my words out. So that's looking all joined up. Uh, so distance probably about 1,370 miles, that's fine, uh, this is all good, so we can leave that. Uh, the cruise is approximately 35,000 feet, optimum is 3.3, so let's just look at maybe 3.3.0 uh, initially. And, oh, uh, minus 40, yeah, 47, minus 47 I suppose, you know, it's 2 degrees warmer, probably a bit lower down. No idea what the temperature is here, that doesn't matter too much. Uh, the zero fuel weights we've got 60.1 slash 30. And we know we need about two and a half tons to get to Fuel to Ventura. So once we've sort of populated with this information, we basically do a quick fuel planning. And this is the FMGC uh, using the route and the winds, working out roughly how much block fuel we need as a minimum. And we can compare this with the, the block fuel on the uh, flight plan. So that's at about 12.6 uh, and that says about 12.2. So that's not looking too bad. That's looking reasonably accurate um, with a CNR there of about 3.5 tonnes which is what it said on the flight plan. So if we say we're going to go 13.7 um, takeoff weight is there and uh, then this is going to give us extra time um, or a figure of extra time. So an extra 43 minutes. So it's working out um, that when we arrive in Madeira, we should have about an extra 43 minutes, uh, and that's to hold. So you know, because the winds are quite uh, quite strong in Madeira, you know, we might want to use this time to wait for the winds to calm down. There, there might be 10 minutes where it calms down a little bit, where we can make the approach, and we might be able to get in. Um, but we've got 43 minutes extra on top of the three and a half tons to wait and hold, maybe make a second approach, and then once that's effectively run out, we're now down to our CNR, which is 3.5, and that's the point we have to either commit to Madeira which is probably unlikely or then we make the decision to uh, to uh, fly to our, our sort of alternate so that's the fuel planning um, so hopefully that sort of run through uh, the sort of the planning side of looking at an alternate on the ground and then once we're once we're airborne we'll look at the rest of it and uh, look at uh, what we do once we arrive down the other end Right, so here we are, nicely settling in a cruise, and uh, let's just have a quick look at the fuel. So we've leveled up at 33,000 feet. Fuel in the center tank pumps have just about finished, so uh, that's pretty much drained, and uh, we've got uh, 11 and a half tons, and it's all still balanced. So, quick look at the FMGC. What's it think we're landing with? So we've got about 5.5 .5 tons uh, estimated to land in uh, Madeira, and don't forget we still on the ground that our CNR uh, is about three and a half. So we've got an extra two tons on top of that, and that's just basically um, confirmed on this page here. So the fuel predictions. So there's our CNR 3.5, uh, and we've got an extra two tons, which uh, works out to be an, app, an ax, uh, extra hour worth of flying time. So if we make the approach at about 14.40, uh, whatever time we're due to get in, and we can't get in because the weather's that bad, we can uh, potentially opt to hold 
uh, somewhere around Madeira and maybe hold up to about an hour before we then decide we're going to go to either Fiatventura, Tenerife or uh, Gran Canaria potentially. So we got plenty of extra fuel um, and uh, the Phoenix obviously not quite burning uh, quite as much as uh, what the forecast was because if we looked at the flight plan um, it's estimated we were going to land with about four tons if we took uh, plug fuel which was 12.7 we took an extra ton on that we took 13.7 so really we should be landing with about five tons um, but uh, that isn't the case we're actually estimated to land at about 5.5 so uh, yeah it's obviously not quite burning uh, quite as much so uh, let's just sort of fast forward now and uh, go down to Madeira and uh, we'll have a look at that and uh, see how we're doing for the fuel once we're down there Right guys, so here we are, we're just uh, to the north of Madeira, just approaching Pilem, which is uh, the hold uh, before the approach. So uh, again, five and a half tonnes, pretty much what we were expecting to, to land with. And again, we can look at our fuel page, uh, and it says five and a half tonnes. Uh, a little bit later than what it was earlier, but uh, still two and a half tonnes to get to Fiatventura, and uh, three and a half tonnes CNR with an extra hour. So um, that's all been good, that's all, all checked, so we know we've got extra fuel. Uh, now let's have a quick look at the weather and uh, more importantly the limits so again to do this approach uh, the, the winds uh, need to be within in these limits and I've just written it down it basically says it's 020 sorry 030 degrees 20 gusting 31 so by one knot we are almost uh, well we are outside the limits so if those winds were to stay consistent um, we can't actually make the approach um, so let's just have a quick look at this, this will be the, the latest weather, it doesn't quite correspond with the time in the sim but don't worry too much about that, just do that, so 03022 gust in 33, so it's actually gone up again, um, so yes, at the minute um, we can't make the approach by two knots on the, on the mean winds and another three knots on the gusts, so effectively all we have to do is just sit around, um, we can't even make the approach, so what would uh, likely happen, um, in fact we probably wouldn't be at 7-0, we'd probably be uh, at uh, a little bit higher, but uh, we're just going to be set, sat here now until we get to sort of 3.5 tonnes, which is going to be our, effectively our CNR and uh, decision point. So what's the other things we can do? Well it's unlikely we're going to get into Madeira based on those winds, we're just going to sit here at 7-0 for the time being. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the flight plan. Now one thing we can do in the real aircraft, it doesn't quite do it in the sim unfortunately, um, but we've got, uh, we now sort of effectively translate to um, what we'd call in-flight fuel management. So we would use the FMGC to update our CNR, it was three and a half tons based on the flight plan, but if we were to update the FMGC and put a route into uh, Fiatventura. So if we go down and we can see this bits in blue, so this is the alternate flight plan here. So if we go on to Fiatventura, let's just have a quick look at the flight plan. It says we should be landing uh, on zero 01, which is pretty as expected for uh, Fiatventura. So ILS Zulu 01, that's most likely what it is. The arrival is a... It doesn't really give us an arrival, but there is an arrival via Comba. So potentially we could do that, maybe not Comba, but in fact there is no arrival um, to select from. We, we could probably choose something here, um, but let's just put no start. So effectively all I'm using now is the alternate flight plan from the, the actual OFP we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this uh, flight plan, uh, alternate flight plan, into the FMGC. So if we go back down to Fiatventura, What I'm going to do, I'm going to enter this route in here, uh, if in the FMGC, and what what this should do uh, in the real world. Certainly, it doesn't do it in the sim, but unfortunately, uh, yes, happy it doesn't do it in the sim. But in the real world, what it does is it updates the fuel planning, um, so it actually give you a more accurate alternate uh, fuel burn and time. So it might actually make the the alternate fuel burn two tons. Uh, and maybe you know an hour or so, which would actually lower your CNR, which means you can actually stick around and wait for the winds to die down in Madeira, maybe uh, a, a lot longer. So, uh, and sadly, it doesn't do that in the sim. 
um, it just sort of uh, it's again another thing that Phoenix probably have to look at. So if we go uh, out of Madeira zero five, I don't think there's a departure. No, it doesn't look like it. So we've got off runway zero five, and then the next waypoint is Kekos. I had to spell that wrong, Kek. Kekos, uh, Kekos, and then Comba. And then a bounty to um, Zumba, Zumba. That there. So it's probably not going to be that tidy, but we know roughly that's the the alternate flight plan to uh, get to. Uh, Fields Ventura. So we can just double check that again. We can look at this. And then we can effectively see we're off 0 5, down to Kekos, uh, and then Comba, uh, and then Zumba, and then there's arrival there. So I mean, there, there might be a star which we could potentially do if we really needed to. Um, if it's certainly tidy up. We know there's a bit of terrain around, so we might actually go off around here a little bit more. But uh, that's the rough flight plan in. Um, now again what this should do in the FMGC, it doesn't do it sadly, but uh, what it would actually do, it would update this alternate uh, trip fuel and time because it's now got an accurate uh, route in. We could upload the winds as well, um, I'm not too sure why that's clear, but uh, we could upload these winds potentially um, and that would give us a, a pretty accurate uh, fuel figure. But it doesn't do that, so sadly, sadly we've just got to keep to the, the original flight plan, so keep 2.5 and uh, 3.5 tonnes. So we've still got just under an hour really to, to sort of fly around in circles, and again we'll probably sort of climb a little bit in reality to just to sort of reduce the fuel burn. And effectively we're just waiting for the fuel, uh, sorry, the, the, the wind in Madeira to uh, die down. So we shall wait to that point, uh, and if it doesn't die down then basically we have to make a decision. So, uh, yeah, let's just hang around, let's keep going around in circles and uh, keep our fingers crossed and hopefully it'll improve. Right, guys, we're back again. So it's just less than an hour later, still holding around Madeira. So, yeah, just a little bit about an hour later on. So, uh, unfortunately, the winds haven't improved, so we haven't even made an approach. So we've just been sat here, sat here, going around and around in circles. Uh, fuel's going a little bit more critical now, so we're down to 3.7. So we're getting to the point now where we need to sort of make a decision. Um, so we need to start looking at our options. So Madeira is no good. That's not really changed. Uh, we can look at the alternate. Um, again, 24013, all the nines. Uh, wind shears reported onto 07. So uh, again, sort of going back to our earlier flight planning, uh, we didn't really want to go to uh, Tenerife. Um, because of that potential wind shift. There's not really a guarantee we're going to get in sort of straight away there. So this is why we looked at Sofia to ensure, fortunately, that took two and a half tons to get to um to, to Grand uh, sorry to Tenerife also covered a few Ventura and Grand Canaria so uh, yeah we know that we can potentially get to few Ventura so let's just have a quick look at the weather for that one um, I have to sort of ping that off so hopefully that would have been received weather here we go few Ventura at 0, 05 0 at 16 um, all the viz good clouds as well and there's a taff as well cover case so there's no change really to the weather in few Ventura so uh, yeah we basically now have to make a decision on what we're doing. Um, are we going to sort of stick around and commit to uh, Madeira, which is probably not really sensible if we've not even made an approach in the last hour because the winds, there's a, a very sort of uh, unlikely chance we're going to be able to do it again. And of course, once we get below three and a half tons, we don't now have enough fuel to get to our alternate and land above final reserve, which is our magic number down here. So we must be landing with at least final reserve, which in this aircraft is about a ton and 30 minutes. That's roughly what it is for the Airbus uh, 320. Obviously, larger aircraft, this, this figure would be different, but uh, the figures st still remain the same. So three minutes left, really, to make this decision. So at this point, we'd be probably speaking to air traffic control and saying, look, this, this isn't going to work. I think we're going to have to start going somewhere else. And uh, I, I, we want to go off to uh, Fiat Ventura. So we look at the flight plan. We've got the alternate uh, flight plan already in. We're going to be cruising at 37,000 feet, and it's going to take about an hour to get there, uh, about two and a half tonnes. So that's the conversation we'd be having with ATC. They'd be saying, that's fine. Again, they're not really going to question our decision. They're just going to accommodate us in whatever we need to do. So if we get to this sort of figure, again, another couple of minutes to go, three minutes until we're down to three and a half tons. 
but uh, I'm not going to use the two and a half minutes to wait. I would just simply be saying that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to leave it and we're going to make our way to Fiat Ventura. In which case, ATC would probably say that's great. Um, they'd probably have the flight plan in, or we could tell them, and we could say the uh, the route we want to take is uh, down to uh, where are we? Uh, Kekos initially and then Comba and Zumba, and ATC would probably allow us to do that. So how are we actually going to action this in the FMGC? So we're not landing in Madeira anymore, we've basically made the decision. That's not what we're going to do. So all we need to do is just do a lateral vision, it doesn't really matter anyone, uh, it doesn't really matter what one you do, but you've got the blue enable alternates. And what this does is this actually turns the primary flight plan that's landed in Madeira, and it basically turns the alternate flight plan that we've already programmed in here, that now turns that into the primary flight plan and changes our destination to Fiat Ventura. So we're going to do that, we're not going to go to Madeira anymore, so enable and uh, put that in. You can see Fiat Ventura has changed and now we've got this uh, flight plan back in. So one thing we do want to do, so good, fortunately Phoenix have done this, so we've kept the holding. Um, so we'd say, yeah, yes please, we're off to uh, Fiat Ventura now, ATC would say thank you very much, direct to, uh, direct to Kekos. So we can go now direct to Kekos. And uh, I want to climb to flight level 370, that makes sense in the right direction. So now we'll go, okay, let's climb up to 370. And so climb, open climb, 370 blue. Now the other thing this should do, um, it, it defaults to using a cost index of zero, which is basically sort of what it does um, on uh, alternate flight plans. But uh, you don't really necessarily have to do that. Uh, we can actually start accelerating and uh, accelerate into a normal cruise speed now. So we can start going back to 250 knots. And I am hoping that the FMGC, in terms of the progress page, uh, that's looking good. So it says 360 is the optimum, so yeah, maybe 350. We said 37, but let's go 35. Um, and let's just amend that to 35 as well. So I'm going to cruise at 350, which is blue. In terms of the performance, we're now back in the climb phase as well. So we've gone from the, the climb to the cruise to the approach phase, which we did on our, our normal sort of flight plan when we were going to Madeira. But because we've now activated the, the alternate flight plan, this has now reset it back to the climb phase. Um, so if we go cost index 12, we could re-put that back in if we need to. And it's got 250 knots, which is the managed speed. And then our cruise speed should be about 300 knots and 0.78. And usually uh, in the QRH, when you do alternate f uh, fuel planning from a QRH, I mean, they're, they're sort of deleting it now, but um, it was always effectively, um, it was forecast at 250 knots until 10,000 feet and then uh, 300 knots, I think, in the climb and then 0.78 to your alternate. That was how the f uh, the uh, flight planning was all uh, worked out in terms of the actual sort of fuel costs. So there we go, that's how we alternate, uh, sorry, that's how we enable the alternate to uh, in the Phoenix to go somewhere else. So we've basically uh, established that we can't get into Madeira anymore, anymore which is our destination. Uh, we've uh, done the sort of the data gathering prior to our, our CNR fuel, which we're now at, so we're now at three and a half, uh, three and a half tons. Um, and we've done this data gathering, we've basically established that we can't get into Madeira and we're gonna have to divert. So we're now diverting on our original planned CNR fuel. Now interestingly enough it now says uh, 1.6 on arrival. Um, so if we go into this, if we delete our alternate fuel, because we're now effectively not diverting now, we, we don't have any alternate fuel because we're going to the alternate. So we're still landing about 600 kilograms above our final reserve. So we're still landing uh, above the final reserve here. So there's no need to do a mayday yet. If there's going to be a delay in Fuerteventura later on, um, for whatever reason, then yes, potentially we might have to put a mayday out if it looks like we're going to land below this. But at the minute, we're effectively, we're almost on minimum fuel and we're just doing a, a direct flight to Fuerteventura. So hopefully that sort of helps a little bit in terms of what buttons you need to press and what you need to do. Obviously the other things you would do is, is normally you, you, know, you have to start speaking to the cabin crew, speaking to the passengers, telling them what's going on. Um, yeah, re-putting the information in the, the approach phase because of course now we're landing in Fiat Ventura so this all changes. So config four potentially and we'd start looking at uh, what was the weather. 
let's just write this in. Received weather data. Uh, and this might change over the next 30 minutes, but it's only going to be very, very, very rough. So 050 at 16, 23 degrees. So much better than what it is in uh, Madeira, that's for sure. And then we can re put this back in or re input this into the approach phase, ready for the approach for, uh, for Fiatventura. 23, 050 at 16. And then we need to just double check the minimums as well. F, uh, F, E, So ILS Sulu to 01, minimums looks like it is 292 feet. 292, and probably stick with Config 4 on this. It's not really windy or gusty or wind shear, so I'm sure Config 4 will be fine. And uh, the landing distance, I'm sure, is, is good as well. So that would come off. Uh, and then we're almost effectively back to uh, what we were doing in the first place, um, going to our original destination. Um, but now, obviously, we're, we're diverting to Fiat Ventura. So once we get a little bit closer, we could probably sort this out in terms of the arrivals, um, the directions we need to sort of come in from. Uh, let's have a quick look at the stars. There's not really any stars. There's a Russics. Yeah. So we could tidy the box up a little bit. And just go arrival. And again, this is this is the sort of thing you can usually do. Uh, oh, that's not correct, is it? So arrival. Uh, ILS Sulu zero one. Uh, we can put an arrival in via maybe tender. And we can see now we've, we've effectively tidied up the flight plan a bit. So this is now just an arrival that takes us in via tender. And there's a little bit of a DME arc onto 01. So we, we kind of know where we are now. We're sort of on a more prescribed uh, arrival, which just helps. And so obviously it just helps the fuel burn a little bit. So again, still only 1.5, 5 tons in fuel to Ventura. You know, not a hell of a lot, uh, not, uh, not a hell of a lot, but still a good 15 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes above final reserve, which is uh, obviously what we're trying to achieve. Um, you don't really want to be landing uh, less than that because that's uh, quite a considerable amount of paperwork. Um, so there we go. So that's effectively what we need to do. Um, there's not really too much else to it. It's the, the, the main issue is the sort of, well, the main considerations is the planning on the ground, which we sort of discussed. Um, and then it's getting the information on route, uh, whether you can actually land at your destination, um, whether you can commit. If the weather's fine, um, then you can you know, potentially commit to your destination because you know the weather's good, there's no reason why you can't get in. Um, you know, obviously assuming how many delays there could be, um, yeah, and this and the other, I suppose. Uh, but today, Madeira, the weather was pretty bad. It was uh, outside the limits. There was no chance we were gonna get into Madeira. Well, certainly not legal to make the approach, so uh, we've made that executive decision well, just before we got to CNR fuel, uh, which was three and a half tons to divert to Fiatventura, and then that basically means we can now land in Fiatventura above our final reserve. But uh, these decisions are made, you know, well before the events. You know that I didn't really make the decision at uh, CNR fuel at three and a half. I didn't start getting weather and, and getting the options. All the option generation was done in the hold well before we got to this this point. So. That's kind of the, the, the trick to sort of alternate uh, flight planning and uh, considerations. Um, and uh, in terms of actually sort of what you do in the box, it's relatively straightforward. There's a couple of a couple of options, as I said, just a little lateral vision. And then if we had put if we put another alternate in here, say uh, GC was it LP? I think it's Grand Canaria. So if we potentially put another alternate in. Um, we could do another lateral vision to enable that to go to Grand Canaria if we needed to, but you know we might need a ton to get there, uh, and which we probably don't have the fuel to do it. So we're more or less committed now to Fiat Ventura. Um, you do have Arrecife. Arrecife isn't too far away. Actually, you could potentially use that. That's not going to take a lot of fuel to get there. Uh, I'm sure getting to Arrecife, you would probably be, yeah, 
maybe half a ton. So potentially we might just uh, might be able to make an approach into First Ventura and divert again to Arrecife and still just about land above Final Reserve. At a worst case, but we're not going to be doing that because we've already selected First Ventura as a probably very sensible alternate, um, which gives us a little bit of extra fuel at First Ventura when we get there. So anyway, hope that was useful, guys. Hope that's uh, a bit more sort of clears things up a little bit more. Um, as usual, if there's any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Anything I said which didn't quite make sense, um, obviously do ask. And uh, yeah, hopefully that make your simming a bit easier, certainly in terms of your decision making and sort of how to work out uh, a little bit of fuel planning when it comes to alternate flight planning, um, because obviously it's something that we need to consider on every flight on um, whether we need to basically look as if we're going to go anywhere else other than our destination so yeah it does get quite easy the more you do it it, it becomes a bit more second nature but um yeah it's quite a straightforward process once you get the hang of it there we go guys have a good one and uh, yeah i'll speak to you soon cheerio bye, -bye. Hundred above. Minimum. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. So there we are guys, so we're back in Fuerza Ventura and we have landed with 1500 kilograms. So that basically completes our tutorial for the diversion. So pretty straightforward once you know what you're doing, but um, yeah, just uh, let me know if there's any comments, any questions, and uh, I'll get back to you if I can. But uh, yeah, hopefully that was quite useful. Cheers, see you later.